The Way of the Trial Lawyer, Beyond Technique by Rick Friedman is a book intended for trial lawyers, uh, including uh, criminal defense attorneys and um, civil plaintiff's attorneys, specifically like personal injury type lawyers. Um, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit in this video what this book is about. And in the description to this video, I'm gonna link to a YouTube video for a presentation that Rick Friedman did that I think expands on some of the bullet points that I'm going to tell you about today. And, um, you know, I don't know if there's an audiobook for this, but if you watch that YouTube, it sort of uh, is a summation of what he goes over in that, uh, in, in the way of the trial lawyer. So, um, so check that video out too. Um, Rick Friedman's, some, probably the three most important concepts from the book, in my opinion, are uh, TWAS, ethos, and moral energy. So I'm going to explain what those three things are. TWAS is a uh, Nordic rune, just that means the way. And for him, it symbolizes the way of the trial lawyer. Uh, it's just his own concept of it. So you can have your own concept of it. Um, this is the one that he thinks is the right path. And Rick Friedman is an accomplished uh, trial lawyer. And his um, he's big on sincerity and, um, and being honest with yourself and then being able to be honest with the jury. But you have to be able to be honest with yourself first. That requires a lot of self-discovery and self-exploration, and it, it, it includes um, exploring parts of your, uh, you know, your mindset or ethos, we'll get in, into that later, uh, parts of you that you might not like or that you might think that other people won't like. You have to be able to be honest with yourself about that, according to Friedman. One of the, one of the examples that he cites is... Um, you know, as a plaintiff's lawyer, if you're representing um, the family of a deceased person, uh, you're going to get paid, hopefully, for that case. And does that make you greedy? Does that make you, uh, you know, a makes you benefit from horrible tragedies? Uh, in a sense, yes. So, how do you reconcile that with um, with your self concept of a, you know, a, a person who's being who um, is a servant to the community, right? Is it, in other words, is it about the money or is it about helping people? Um, is that mutually exclusive? That's something for you to ask yourself and explore yourself. But he sort of walks you through how you might, um, how you might think about that. He, I've also included on this slide a couple quotes that he uh, references in the book. Um, the second one is Jim McComas. I think his name is Jim, and he is a, uh, a trial lawyer that Friedman. Uh, respects a lot, and then Jerry Spence is the third quote, who's also a renowned trial lawyer. Um, ethos. So you might have heard of um, logos or logos, ethos, and pathos. Um, ethos is what's inside of you, basically. Um, again, you've got to discover what your ethos is. Friedman says you should go to therapy. Um, that's one way to do it. There's probably other ways. Um, but the most important thing is that you're, you're really seeking the truth inside yourself. Um, it's, you know, the way he describes it, it's a very hard thing to do. Uh, and it's a constant, it's a lifelong pursuit and it's not easy because like I said, it involves confronting, um, aspects of your character that you might not like. Um, yeah, so uh, when I made this PowerPoint, I found all these pictures of blues guitar players because it kind of reminds me of the way people talk about having the blues. Like, if you want to play a really soulful guitar solo, you need to have the blues. Um, you have to be tapped into your ethos uh, on a, in a deep way if you're going to then, you know, give off the type of energy that a jury can connect with. The same way that, you know, musicians rel might rely on 
raw emotion to um, to play a song that an audience really connects with and and identifies with. Um, ethos is the blues for the trial lawyer, I think. Uh, moral energy. Moral energy is like pathos. Pathos is what's inside of the jury. So you've got your ethos and then you've got their pathos. They might not be the same thing. Um, the moral energy of the case for you, the, do the dominant moral energy, might be different than the dominant moral energy uh, of the jury when they uh, you know, hear the facts of the case. And I'll, um, I'll give you an example of that later. Um, but what uh, a, a skill that you should hone if you want to be a good trial lawyer, he says, I think, is uh, to uh, keep your ear attuned to what the moral energies of a case might be. Uh, is it about corporate greed? Um, is it about um, you know carelessness or selfishness or you know what is it? Explore that. Find out what that is. It takes a little bit of a you know a, it takes a keen eye and maybe a developed sense of of moral energy. And and he gives lots of examples of how the moral energy might change throughout a case. Um, you know you you hear of two people dying in a car wreck. Um, there's one moral energy, and then you find out that um, they just uh, were they just robbed a bank and shot two people, and they were fleeing uh, that robbery. Does that change the way you feel about um, about their death? Well, uh, that's something uh, that's that's the moral energy of the case, and it changes depending on the facts. Um, here's a, a recent example. I'm going to zoom in and put my glasses on. Um, so in the Little League World Series, a, um, one of the Little League baseball players, they were staying at whatever the Little League campus is. Like you stay overnight, there's a bunch of bunk beds. One of the Little League players uh, fell out of the bunk bed and suffered a really traumatic brain injury. There were no rails on the bunk beds. So when I heard this case, I thought, wow, that's really sad and totally avoidable. Uh, and, uh, and I said, I hope this family you know, gets the compensation they deserve. I hope this kid gets the medical care he needs. Um, but then I read the Facebook comments. I'm going to in increase the size of this. And I've blur blurred people's names out. And what are people saying? Everyone is Sue happy. Uh, suing Little League Baseball really isn't their fault. Sorry. Um, Say farewell to bunk beds. Too many soft peaches are ruining everything for everyone else. Also, be ready to pay more cost on signing your kids up for baseball. Thanks to the suing frenzy generation. Uh, all right, let's zoom that back out. So, I mean, that's not my response to it. But if, if you're the lawyer who takes that case on those people could be on your jury and uh, if you just ignore the moral energy that they feel just because you think it's wrong uh, then you won't connect with them and, and you won't be able to do as good of a job for your client um, so search for facts about the case that might affect the moral energy for them, you know? Um, was Little League aware that, you know, kids could fall out of these bunk beds? Had it happened before? Had there been complaints? Things like that. Um, why are the kids sleeping in bunk beds? Uh, how much money is Little League making off of these kids? Are the kids getting paid? Things like that. Um, you know, are they? how much would it have cost to get rails on the bunk beds versus how much money does Little League bring in every year? Um, things like that might affect the moral energy. Okay, so their moral energy, I, I forgot I had this little bullet point here. Their moral energy is greed is bad and it's going to cost more for me to sign my kids up for Little League. Um, geez. 
you know, uh, people are entitled to their, um, you know, responses. And, and if you're doing for dire or something like that, I don't think it would be a good strategy to like, uh, respond derisively, even in your heart, which I kind of can't help but doing, but do, uh, when someone complains about the cost versus this kid's brain injury, but that's really not a useful response for you. It's much better for you to have empathy and, and figure out why that is and find some way to connect with these people, right? So moral energy, stay attuned to it. Um, conclusion, okay, we talked about Tiwaz, uh, the way. You're on, you're on the path, okay? Uh, what's that path for you? It's different for everyone else, but there might be some commonalities between them all. Um, ethos, okay, what is your own ethos? Uh, why are you doing what you're doing? Uh, do you think do you think that uh, do you think what you're doing is moral? Why um, is it fulfilling? Why um, stuff like that? Moral energy. Uh, what's going on in the case? How do I feel about it? How do how will a jury feel about it? Um, these are broad strokes uh, about this book. Uh, I recommend it. It's not a technique book, although there are, although there are a few um, examples that he gives for fairly um, you know, standard fact patterns. Uh, I think there's a company truck example and maybe something else very, I don't know, I thought there were a few um, uh, you know, standard fact patterns that he discusses the moral energy and I, and I thought to myself, oh, you know, that applies to uh, a handful of, of, of cases that I, I've worked on or am working on. So, but it's not, it's not, it's really more of a spiritual guide, I would say. It's not so much a, uh, it's not rules for the road. Um, it's a little different. Okay, uh, if you want to talk to me, uh, my Twitter is up here. It's at Jack D. Hurd, H-U-R-D. And just uh, send me a direct message. Um, and thank you for watching. I hope that this uh, book... Uh, helps you find your own path and or, wait yeah <laughs> I hope this review of this book helps you find your own path and 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 helps you get fulfillment and hopefully I didn't ramble on too much because I'm not going to edit this and uh, best of luck uh, mahalo